Well, today, as you know, is a very interesting day. I decided to mostly focus on AEW Rampage and NXT Level Up. But also, we got Impact Wrestling Hard to Kill, which was an amazing show, despite we saw some great moments on both two of the two title matches that took place. Of course, the Impact World title in a Full Metal Mayhem event. <coughs> Will Bully Ray dethrone Josh Alexander and finally proclaim that he got what he wanted? Or will Josh Alexander get his payback for all the months of mind games that Bully played? But also, <coughs> for the main event, we are going to see, will this be Mickey James' last rodeo? Or she will finally become the Knockouts Women's Champion. So we just got to wait and see. And of course, we got some news updates to tell what's been going on in the world of pro wrestling regarding about the WWE sale and all this other stuff, GCW updates, and many more. So, let's get ready for another episode of the Deleted Wrestle Zone. Welcome everybody to the Lead It Wrestle Zone, all things that is pro wrestling with AEW, NXT, New Japan Pro Wrestling, Impact Wrestling, the National Wrestling Alliance, various promotions, wrestlers, matches, and championships. I am your host, J-Rod here. So, let's begin with AEW Rampage. Now, despite the fact that I was there, it doesn't mean I cannot review. I couldn't do the Dynamite one because A, I felt like I don't want to spoil exactly from what I'm going to put on the the video that I will put out this coming Saturday. So, which is, of course, today is the 10th. What's the day? Well, no, never mind. Today is the fourth. Today is the 13th, and tomorrow is the 14th. So, basically, that's the reason. Now, it opened up with the TNT title. This was a match that Juice Robinson asked for. As you know, uh, Darby Allen has been quite a role since he actually regained this title from Samoa Joe. I have to say, 90, watching this match even up close, I felt like Darby Allen took 90% of the beating in this particular match. And I think that tells it all. So, I just didn't expect the whole thing to go that way. But it tells a story. No matter what Juice Robinson tried to pull, no matter what exactly did he try to dismantle, <coughs> Darby Allen took the beating no matter what. And, of course, he finished him off with the coffin drop. Attained at the title, but in the post match, we saw Sting. Now, it's always great to see Sting. Now, keep in mind, next week we will see Darby Allen will be in a match against Kushida in, on Dynamite, but I will this will be the last time we'll see him in AW till he heads to Japan. As you know, he'll be teaming with Sting and the Great Muda to be in a pro wrestling match, which is the, the Muda's final time we see him. <coughs> I hope I get to see that match. I'm dying to see it now the acclaim as you know they come out do their thing cementing their legacy basically they're well i'm gonna spoil this for all of you guys even though you didn't see this as we see as you know aw rampage is all ta pre uh, taped basically they recorded after um dynamite Masscaster screwed up his lines and he had to start again. People were saying, You effed up, you effed up. So it was so funny. <coughs> but they got a great, <coughs> some great moments, including they were making references of the whole thing with the blood money with Vince McMahon and also with the sale. So I think that kind of sets it up. But as you know, they were trying to put themselves in the walk of fame by using the two dots. However, they were interrupted because they, by the guns, who they felt that they are the true stars due to the fact that they said they are the ones to destroy FTR. No, they didn't destroy FTR. They just stole the win and believing that the re they're no longer the same tag team. We do know FTR are going to be out for a couple of months. But however, 
they really did cement their legacy by putting their asses in the cement. So I thought that was fitting. Well, you said you want to be cemented with your legacy. There's your ass. <laughs> so I thought it was great. It was a great moment to see. Now, we do see an interview with Swerve Strickland and the Mongol inf uh, affiliates. Now, I don't know what is the deal. They're like saying these things. I'm not paying attention too much about it, but yeah. Now, our next match is the King of the Black Thrones, members of the Black House of Black, Malachi Black and Brody King. They take on Eddie Kingston and Ortiz. Now, we know that Buddy Matthews and Julia are lurking around in the back somewhere. The match was so intense, but I think the best moment for me is when Malachi and Eddie Kingston were on the ground sitting. I think that's a great moment, but of course, sooner or later, we did see Buddy Matthews show up at the chair. Things kind of went out of confusion. Um, Julia Hart kind of shows up. Eddie almost tried to whack her with the, ch the chair, but Ortiz tried to stop her, but things went out of hand when Malachi Black... Uh, did the black mass on Eddie, allowing for him to pick up the win while they, Buddy Matthews hold Ortiz down. So things may be falling apart for o o Ortiz and Kingston. We just don't know how it is. We know that Ortiz stood by his side time and time again, but sooner or later we probably will see that that friendship could explode at some point. But we will see when that day happens. Now, we do see an interview with Jade Cargill. Now, Jade Cargill, as you know, we've been seeing what's been going on with Red Velvet. Now, the initial thought that, Re that Jade is thinking that, oh, that Red Velvet was jealous because of Layla Gray. No, I think in my opinion, she's missing the point. We all, I think there was some things that Taz or and, and Excalibur made some of uh, great points. What if she, uh, Jade, Red Velvet did not like the idea of kicking out uh Kira Hogan. They were really tight together when as the baddies, but the only reason Kira Hogan was kicked out was because I think Ju uh, Jade felt that she was useless after Nyla Rose stole her belt. But yeah, that's what I think happens. Now we go into the ring. We see Renee Paquette with <coughs> Paul Walker uh, hold on. Paul Walker Hauser, who just won the Golden Globe, and of course Dan Hausen shows up. He said that he won for best merchandise of 2022, but however, he did not get an award, so he asked for this if he can give him the award. So Hauser was willing to do that, but out of the blue. Once again, who wants to be the center of attention? Jay Lethal, Jeff Jarrett, and of course, the little stooge, Sanjay Dunn, along with the big fellow, oh, uh, should I say the dummy, Stamina Singh showed up. I have to say that, of course, I like what Hauser was saying, all this stuff about him, you know. But fortunately, they were attacked out of the blue. Jeff Jarrett whacked them in the head. But here comes OC and the best friends to the rescue. But however, they stole the Golden Globe, claiming that they are the winners. But sooner or later, the OCs and the best friends, along with Dan Housen, they'll get that back regardless. So sooner or later, they'll have their day. Now, our, I think... Our main event is the street fight between Ty J, Anna J, and Ty Mello. Keep in mind, they have won this type of match before, but they faced Ruby Soho and Willow Nango. This whole thing started when Ruby was attacked by Ty Mello during the time when Kingston was at war with Jericho and all this and that. So that kind of sets the whole thing, and Will Nango was integrated into this. And they pulled a du the, the, the Dudleys, if you guys remember. Um... Ruby actually call, uh, said Willow to go get the tables. And I thought it was a pretty intense match. We all knew that certain things were going to happen. We saw that there, the chairs, the ladders, even that barbed wire that Anna, Anna Jay used on the bunny was going to come out. But it did not work. Even Dumbtack showed up. But the best moment is, while the main focus was Ty Mello and, Anna, and Ruby Soho in the ring, Willow took Anna Jay and... I think there was a big miss on this match. You saw that um, Anna J might have hit herself hard on the I don't know, on the floor, while uh, it was <coughs> Willow who took the the table. But the moment in the bat in the ring went when uh, Ruby Soho applied Destination Unknown and won the match. I thought it was a great match. It did show that you know they went the war, hell and back. Then of course Ruby gave 
will the Nine Guild the respect that she deserves. She stood by her side. So what's next for Ruby and Willow? Well, we know there could be possibility for championship matches. That's something they could get. So we'll see what happens in the near future for those two. So let's move on with NXT Level Up. <coughs> okay, so who levels up on this episode of NXT Level Up? So let's find out. Our first match we have... <coughs> Von Wagner, along with Mr. Stone, taking on Oba Femi. I thought this match was good because these <coughs> are two individual men. But however, from the way seen, Oba feels more heavier than Von Wagner. And it took a lot of strength for Von Wagner to pick him up. I know that he is out to make a statement. And of course, <coughs> send a direct message to everyone who were there i think that's the whole point and he pulled off a somewhat of a death valley driver and win the match and that was it now our next match we have the women taking over we saw um isla don taking on jakara jackson now she is jakara jackson is not intimidated by isla don as you know isla don's a little cuckoo so, however, she did put up a good match. However, Isla Dawn, I had that distinct feeling that she was going to walk out as the winner. I know she's trying to make up for, <coughs> for that loss with Alba Fire. But she did pull it off with um, a somewhat of a version of the rabbit hole ma uh, move that the bunny does. And allowed her to pick up the win. So, she levels up today. Now, our main event, I have to say, it's one of my favorite ones we have. Duke Hudson taking on Damon Kemp. I have to say, Duke Hudson seems like he had a new relief since he embraced the Chase U lifestyle. He even says he hates the Aussies, even though he's an Aussie himself. But he seems like he can embrace it. I didn't think he was going to do it. Not to mention he did the, you know, when everybody spelled out the Chase U and all that. I thought it was pretty cool. So it seems like he is going to be like the guy who will step up. Since Brody Hayward in real life, what we know what happened is that he was cut from from NXT. So we'll see how that plays out. But I have to say I'm liking this new Duke Hudson a lot more better. So I think that's pretty much... Oh yeah, he ended it with a Lebowski on this match on Damon Kemp giving him a good win. So we'll see what happens in the upcoming weeks or months with him. So uh, I think that's pretty much it with NXT level up. So let's do our final review. Impact Wrestling Hard 2 Kill. Okay, Impact Wrestling hard to kill. Ironically, I failed to mention it's Friday the 13th. <laughs> Makes me think about Jason, you know what I mean? <laughs> But, <coughs> jokes aside, let's just get cracking. I have to say, I like how they opened the show where they dedicate this event to the late Don West. As you know, I did report it that he passed away. I'm a fan of Don West with his energy, his enthusiastic with his work, what he did in TNA back in the day. And I have to say, it was very touching for them. So they did the 10 bell salute in his memory, and I think that was a great moment. I don't think they did that in the tapings, but uh, it's great they did it on this one. So let's see what happens. But our opening match is the Impact World title in a full metal mass mayhem massacre between Bully Ray and Josh Alexander. This feud has gone far enough where Bully Ray, as you know, made his triumph for return, winning the shot in the gauntlet, the take on josh alexander at his time of his choosing he claims that he was a changed man but many people who said they knew bully they tried to warn alexander not to trust the word he's saying now alexander is the kind of man who's willing to say in the end that he never did listen to anybody but he knew he couldn't trust bully ray regardless of what people thought but he bully ray took it too far by trying to hurt his wife and all this other stuff 
Not to mention last week, Bully took out uh, Scott the Moore. <coughs> so that kind of sets into its own way. But I knew for a fact that this match, that Bully Ray would do whatever it takes to win. Doesn't matter what toys were in the ring. The Those idiots, Hodge and Skyler showed up, giving the helping hand. And then Tommy Dreamer showed up, playing the little mind game with Bully Ray, saying he's on his side. But it did not work, but he got sp- speared through a table but all of a sudden later we did see jade josh's wife shows up but of course um jade the bully was trying to beg her to have surrender and all this but no she got a little payback by giving him a low blow and then using the the slice of bread right onto him in order to put him out for the time being but he she did help Josh Alexander win the match. At first, he did a diving splash on top of the ladder while he's in the in the bottom, and then he put the ankle lock on him, forcing him to tap out. So, <coughs> Josh Alexander, after all the hell he went through, he retained the title. Now we do see in the back, as you know, our main event is the career versus title. Lisa Marie, who's Nervous, who's been a, a knockouts champion herself, is worried about Mickey because we don't know if this will be her last time or will she finally do the impossible after what happened last year. We'll just wait and see. And of course, we did see Raven. If you guys remember their history, Raven put her part of the gathering when she started out. So that's going to be great. Now, our next match is a Impact Wrestling World Tag Team titled emulation match four way we have the major brothers uh brian myers and matt cardona versus the bullet club uh chris bay and ace austin versus heat and rhino versus the motor city machine guns our current champions alex shelley and chris sabian i have to say i did not anticipate that rhino and heath will be actually eliminated first but it did play out well then, of course, the major players were the next one. But I think I like how somehow history repeated itself with the Bullet Club, knowing that, <coughs> if you guys remember, they were the runner-ups at the Super Junior Tag League. And it played out very nicely until um, Chris, um, Alex Shelley pl- put the dirty bomb on Chris Bay and allowing them to retain the titles. So that's great to see. But, however, when the celebration was happening, we did not see this coming. No one saw it. I'm sure the AW fans did not know this. Frankie Kazarian shows up. And he talked about how going back to AW felt like he was working with complete strangers. Like people he doesn't even know. We always often say that TNA and Impact have always been his home. So he did say that he signed a multi-year contract with Impact. And now it's been told from what we're tell, uh, being told that Frank Gazarian is no longer with WWE. I mean, with AEW, it looks like that he was released from the company. I'm going to assume on good terms and can't wait to see what else he's going to do. I'm sure he will be gunning for the Impact World title on, in this point, but we'll just got to wait and see. Now, our next match is the Impact Digital Media Championship between Moose and Joe Hendry. As you know, Joe Hendry got in the play mind games with um, Moose. I thought this match was good, but I'll skip to the end that cha- changes. Moose actually tried to play off a game where he lo- <coughs> tried to grab the belt. The referee stopped him, but without him seeing it, he low-blowed Joe Hendry, picked his speared, speared him, and win the digital media title. But out of nowhere, we see someone we all know from WWE, Santino Morella. He is now the director of authority, the, ru- the rumor is that someone's going to step up as an authority. Now that Scott Demore will be out for a while. So it looks more like it was him. So he said he did not like what he saw. That he is demanding this match be restarted. And of course, Joe Hendry won when he picked up Moose with the standing ovation. And the title remained with him. So I thought that was a very interesting moment. <coughs> I wouldn't be surprised if Moose decides to go after Santino Morella. So... We'll see what happens then. Now, I did not see the bit spin out show earlier. Kenny King once again got into Bailey's business and costing him an opportunity for the X Division title. However, he's saying that 
what he did to his students was not his fault. That was all Bailey's fault. Will they trust him? He plays his mind games like he thinks he's politically correct. But he claims that he is the guy who's going to whoop him in the pit fight. We just got to wait and see when that happened. It could happen this coming sun, uh, Thursday. So we'll be watching out for that. Now, uh, it did tell that Kushida is the number one contender. So we will see him face the ex champion. So that is going to be a fun match. Now, our next match is the Knockouts um, World Title Number One Contendership. In a four-way, we have Diana Perrazzo versus Marcia Slamovic versus Taylor Wilde versus Keller Kelly. Now, the X factor is Killer Kelly hasn't been seen in months. I have to say it could fall in her favor, but I have to say a lot of this momentum is now it's, was like submission after submission by Diana Perrazzo, but unfortunately, it was... Uh, Match sign with the snow cloud that won the match when she pinned Taylor Wilde. And one, two, three, she is now the number one contender. But we know for a fact she'll be watching closely who will walk out between Jordan Grace and Masha Slamovich. Now, we did see Raven go to the commentary for one specific reason. The fall count anywhere between both Rich Swan and uh, Steve Macklin. Macklin went to war completely with the uh with Rich Swan. Now Macklin has been obsessed saying that he's been tired that people have been cutting a line. He felt that people were violating the rules. Enough is enough, so he's gonna try to take a shot. And he did. He actually took a shot on uh Rich Swan by applying to KIA, winning the match. But he did send a direct message to Josh Alexander that he will be watching him. So we'll see what that looks like. In our next match, we have Eddie Kingston, I mean Eddie Edwards, versus jo Jonathan Gresham. Now, you probably can guess this is where Eddie Edwards says, I have to focus on the future. I'm going to bury the past once and for all. And it took him at least maybe two or three times to apply the Boston E party to take out Gresham, and it did. However, he thought that he got rid of PCO. He shows up. <coughs> I'm sure Eddie is not happy with this idea that PCO shows up. He thought he put him behind him, but Alicia Edwards had this feeling that something was going to go down. Look what happened. So we'll see what happens. In our main event, we had the Knockouts Championship title versus career. I thought an instant classic on this match. Jordan Grace and Mickey James has never faced off before, but I thought it was a good moment here. I thought... I thought it was a pretty good match. Uh, Mickey James tried like the Mickey uh, Mickey DDT. It didn't work. Everything, but it took at least a tornado DDT my Mickey James to finally put down Jordan uh, Grace, becoming our brand new Impact Wrestling Knockouts World Champion. So it's great, but we gotta wait and see what happens this coming Thursday. Will Masha Slavich make her appearance to make a statement? To say that she'll be coming for her title. We just got to wait and see when that day happens. So I think that's pretty much it right now with Impact Wrestling. Let's do our final thing. News updates. Okay, welcome to our news update. So let's talk about what's been going on. First things first with WWE. As you know, we've been hearing the sale taking place. There's a lot of people that have been worried about, about this. Now, recently on SmackDown, um, before the show started, Triple H set up a meeting with the talent, telling them to reassure them that Vince will not be interfering with how do I say, with the creative process. We know that Vince is very sneaky about that. So basically, that's what he's trying to assure. Now, we know that the idea what Vince wants is to sell the company. But however, um, recently, new information has risen um, that none of the potential buyers have any interest of having Vince in charge. So that's a good thing. Now, keep in mind, with Vince in charge, we know how things would get. The problem was with Vince's charge, he makes things worse. Ripping off the script, not giving talent enough 
it's time to it air time or potential to rise to the occasion i think that is everything but that could be um something we're gonna be hopefully that doesn't happen but let's and also if you guys know stephanie mcmahon had surgery recently she is currently right now on full recovery so just thank god so this has happened right after she uh resigned from the company but she's doing okay just let everybody know now however um if you guys remember this past tuesday for nxt new year's evil we were supposed to have the the creed brothers taking on in the chair however there was a change in the plan we did see jinder mahal make an appearance <coughs> but however we didn't know where Ver was, but on Ver's social media, he had not, the reason he wasn't there, uh, he had to leave because his father passed away, which, of course, is understandable. Um, my thoughts and prayers are to Ver and his family. Uh, it's, it's sad, but that's how life is, you know. So, all right, moving on the GCW events, we have, of course, <coughs> for the Don't Talk to Me event on the twentieth of this month, we have. Champagne taking on Roll Radic. That's going to be interesting to see. For the Take a Picture event that takes place on the 21st of January, we're going to have the GCW World Tag Team titles on the line. We got Los Macisos taking on the East West Express, Nick Wayne, and Jordan Oliver. I have to say that's going to be a good match. Now, uh, for the 18th of February, for middle of the night, the GCW World Title will be on the line between Nick Gage and Speedball Mike Bailey. I have to say, I'm looking forward to that one. Maki Ito makes her return. She is now the fourth person who is going to be involved in both the Holy uh, Smokes show that takes place on the 4th of March and also on Ransom the following day on the 5th of March. Now, for the I&I &I event... It's been announced that Alex Shelley will be returning on the 17th of March. I'm looking forward to that. And then finally, for worst behavior, that's going to take place in Toronto on the 19th of March. Mike Bailey will be there. Keep in mind, Mike Bailey, he is Canadian from Montreal. This will be a home field advantage on his part. <coughs> now, for our MLW moments. We just saw the MLW announced that Becca will be making her debut on the 4th of February, I think, on the 4th for a uh, super fight, which is awesome. But however, we just received word that the current uh, Open the Dragon, Open the uh, Twin Gate champions uh, from Dragon Gate, the Natural Vibes, KZ and Big, uh, um, who was it again? Big Boss Shimizu have called out the MLW <coughs> Tag Team Champions, which, of course, I'm going to spoil this for all of you, is Juicy for now and Lance Annoy. So, that's been announced. Now, for our updates with West Coast Pro, we have two things. For the three cheers for Street Revenge, that takes place on the 4th of February. Lee Moriarty will team up with members of the conglomerate to take on Starboy, Charlie, Kevin Knight, and Jack Cartwheel. Then, of course, for their upcoming show that takes place later on in the in March, we have the West Coast Best Crows, where Latigo makes his debut. And finally, for our last update, the Fire Wrestling is announced for two things. For Most Dangerous, that takes place on the 20th, we have the Voro Twins taking on Sinner and Saint. I don't know who they got, but the Voro Twins. You may see them on AW on the Dark or Dark Elevation. And of course, the biggest surprise, John Moxley makes his way to Defy. And he will be challenging Shaft on the 11th of February and on Defy Year 6. So I don't know exactly what's going on here. We know he was not allowed to do any more with GCW. But it seems that things are going to go well exactly their way. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, I think that's pretty much it. What we have for our news updates, I believe it's time to call it a day. Well, I hope everybody enjoys this episode. Coming up, I will be doing an Unagi Sayaka watch video where we review her match with Queen Aminata that took place this past weekend on the 8th of February. I have to say it was a pretty good match and also review what her schedule is going to be coming up. If those who are following or watch 
like the show she's going to be involved. So um, there's some events I am aware of that from what matches are going to take place. So we'll talk about those two. And then I'll be doing another episode. And hopefully soon enough, I'll be releasing the video of my trip down with, to L.A. for AEW, Dynamite, and Rampage. And of course, Dark will be released as a bonus as a bonus thing. So we'll see what happens then. So I'll see you guys in the next DWZ time. Same DWZ channel. I must bid all of you adieu. So goodbye. And have a nice day.